this is a week's sail up to uh, Holy Island, stopping at uh, various ports and anchorages uh, up along that stretch of coast. Uh, our first port of call was Amble Marina. Uh, we were waiting for the tide to rise high enough to be, able to be able to get into the marina, so we anchored up just south of Coquette Island, um, just by that lighthouse in the middle of that circle. Uh, so this is the video of it. We were just manoeuvring around looking for a good place to anchor. But uh, really hot weather, lots of uh, bird life, puffins and uh, some uh, mackerel uh, that we caught and had for lunch. Quite a lot of rocks uh, around in the area and you need to be a little bit careful on entry into Amble because there are some reefs uh, that you need to avoid but quite clearly marked. We were motor sailing um, quite a lot during the course of this week because uh, uh, there have been very light winds. So we have had the sails up. We did do a little bit of sailing, but I have to say quite a lot of it was uh, motor sailing as well. Now this is Amble Marina, uh, which I really recommend. It's a lovely base uh, to explore that stretch of coastline. Very, very helpful staff, lovely site, um, great stretch of coast. All right, that's the entrance to Amble Marina. Now you do need to be a bit careful because as you can see, those green uh, areas are drying. Uh, the blue areas are um, shallow water uh, and that's our berth there just on the left the blue uh, stern sticking out there and uh, that's a view of the entrance you can just see the breakwaters there on uh, top right and then the entrance into the Coquette River uh, and there's a red can boy there that you just need to go in and then you're in the marina Right, well, this was up at Inner Farn Island. Spectacular scenery. Uh, hundreds, must be hundreds of thousands of birds. Incredible sight, incredible sound as well. Now you can see from the bow wave, we're actually not going very fast, uh, but there's quite a bow wave there. Now a lot of that is caused by the tide. We were fighting an adverse tide coming up here. Yeah, the uh, tidal arrow on this chart uh, is pretty much where the next video was taken, but uh, unfortunately uh, the tide was heading the other way on the day uh, that we went through here. You can also see that green mark up on the top left there, which uh, just keeps you off those rocks. There's a reef there that that's uh, there to try and uh, make sure that you avoid.
Uh, this anchorage is Newton Haven. Um, lovely place to stop. It's very close to Dunstanborough Castle, uh, which you can just see uh, now in the video, in the distance there. Uh, very well protected, uh, as long as you're careful with the reefs, as you can see, obviously. Uh, but a very good uh, pub as well, the Ship Inn, which is, ha has its own brewery and lovely food too. Now, you just need to be careful, as I say, there's a rock uh, parallel to the radio mast, uh, which you can see on the chart there. So you just need to set up your line uh, and just go in to avoid that rock. Uh, but that's the anchorage. Uh, and that's the radio mast just there on the top of that hill. So if you can identify that, it's quite hard to see uh, when you're outside. But identify the radio mast, then you will be getting there and identify your transit to get in. Uh, and then once you're in, uh, it's lovely. Absolutely beautiful place to stop. Uh, now that's Dunstanborough Castle from the south, so it's just um, uh, heading up towards the north there, and that's Newton Haven off there in the distance uh, with the reef just uh, to the south of it. So if you know where you are in relation to Dunstanborough Castle, it helps you uh, find Newton Haven Anchorage. Uh, that's the chart for the approach to Holy Island Anchorage. Uh, you can see there's quite a lot of buoyage and navigation aids, uh, which are there, all there to help you get in. Uh, so you need to identify your, uh, your buoys. Uh, just identify which one's which. Make sure that you're going at the right state of tide. Uh, follow the transits. Uh, and it's a great uh, anchorage. One thing we did find is when entering or levering the anchorage, uh, go through as near as you can to slack water, uh, because otherwise the tidal forces do make the um, passage quite uncomfortable.
Now here, the little blue inlet uh, immediately above the lighthouse on Farn Island, uh, now that's an anchorage called the Kettle. Uh, and again, that is a great place to stop. Uh, now we've only ever stopped for lunch here before, um, but you can overnight there in settled conditions. You can see where the sand is. Ideally, you would get your anchor in there rather than in the surrounding kelp, which is fairly obvious. Uh, so placing uh, anchor uh, into the sand would give you a, a more reassuring night's sleep, I would have thought. Uh, although we have only stopped there for uh, for lunch, as I say. But uh, again, it's, it's a lovely place. You'd need to be careful to keep away from where the tripper boats, uh, the day trippers, come out from sea houses and uh, land on Inner Farn uh, for people to have a walk and uh, bird watch. Uh, so just try and keep a little bit further over to the other side, uh, where there's a bit better sand anyway, I would have thought. Uh, and then you won't get in trouble with the tripper boats. Uh, and as long as you do that, uh, you'll have a bit of peace. Apart from the noise of the birds, uh, which really is something uh, when you're there. And uh, we uh, approach the kettle this time from the north uh, and when you do that you need to identify the Swedman boy uh, which is a green boy you'll see on that chartlet um, earlier on uh, and uh, keeping that on your port side will uh, keep you off the rocks surrounding the Megstone so uh, you must identify the Swedman boy uh, and just keep on a transit to avoid that, uh, that reef.